Hey, this is Chase Sexton, and you're listening to the Moto X Pod Show. What's up, you guys? Jeremy McGrath here. You are listening to Moto X Pod Show. All right, guys, we're back with another Vital MX Moto X Pod Show presented by Race Tech and Yamaha Motor USA. There's plenty to talk about after the first Supercross in Birmingham, Alabama at Protective Stadium. I want to get into all the stuff that uh, around the stadium and what I saw being there. It's going to be some fun discussion, I think. A lot to going on with the race. Uh, we'll talk about the race. We'll talk about the venue. I'm sure plenty of other things tonight we'll get into, guys. We have a fun show with Firepower Honda's Max Ansey, Dirt Bike Depot's Bryce Shelley. He's on the same team as Gavin, uh, yeah, Gavin Gage Linville, who was on recently. That team, all four of their riders made the main this past weekend. A full privateer team, Bryce, Bryce Shelley, Gage Linville, Marcus Phelps, and Logan Leitzel all made the main. Pretty impressive for those guys. Then we're going to have Kawasaki's Brock Tickle to come on and talk about helping develop the new KX450 for production and for the race team, et cetera. So that should be a lot of fun. We're going to get into our top five, our troll training top five, TJ. You had, it, this week is top five cars of all time. You were going to give us some parameters. Oh, yeah, by the way, Scotty is in studio <laughs> working the, the mics, the cameras, the YouTube chat. What's up, Scotty? Hey, how's it going? Hey, hey. <laughs> TJ, you're also in studio again. I am. Uh, you're a car guy more than I am. I like cars, but I'm not. I would not call myself a car guy. Yeah. I love looking at cars, but that's really all I care about, really, or and how they sound. Yes. Fuel mileage and what engines in them. Don't care as long as they sound mean. That's what I like. But you had some parameters, but then we never got to them. We talked about it last week. Hey, we'll do it at the end of the show. We forgot. Then you texted us. We still never got into it, so well, no, no, it's no. wide open. No, we started getting into parameters, and Did I we? was going to say, oh, yeah, we, we started talking about it, and I was like, why don't we set a, 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 what's the word I'm looking for, a limit, a a maximum allowable budget for your dream car garage, which I love those kind of talks and stuff like that, because that way you can't just pick a bunch of million-dollar cars, and um, but you were just like, yeah, that sounds good. I'm just going to do what I want. <laughs> well, I wasn't, gonna, I, I wasn't like normal. going to pick a million dollar car. Anyway, I already knew that. But like, you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, I mean, when I say. But what, I don't like, I didn't, re- I was going to, I agreed to it. Yeah. When you said so, I was like, it's fine. But then at the same time, I was like, some of the cars I like might be worth a million dollars now. But when they were sold originally, they were probably like three grand. So who cares? <laughs> like, well, my, my thinking is when you have your, your dream car garage, this would be the last vehicles you ever have. So you kind of need a truck and you kind of need uh-huh. this. And, and so you actually have to put some thought into it and care instead of going, Oh, that car's pretty. No, I don't want any thought into it. I just want to talk about how, how cool it is. Yeah. But, uh, race tech, race tech is the world's largest aftermarket motorcycle suspension modification company. And they have over 35 years of experience providing factory level suspension for the everyday rider. Race Tech Gold Valves provide a plush feel with drastically improved bottoming resistance, increased traction. All Race Tech products are 100% guaranteed and made in the USA. So visit racetech.com to find out who your, where your local service center is. Find out who your local rep, tech, rep or tech is. Probably at the local track. Get to know the guy. Take your stuff there to have them service and revalve anything you need. Race Tech is on top of things. Racetech dot, racetech.com. Appreciate those guys being on board. Uh, Scotty... All right, let's get into the Birmingham, Alabama, new stadium. Dirt was, yeah, dirt hit, got hammered by rain. The rain didn't come further, which we expected. They dummied down the track a little bit, expecting for rain. What did you think about that whole process, first of all? Did you still think, even though it ended up being nice, that it was okay? I mean, were you okay with the fact that they changed the track, and dummied it down, and then we didn't have rain? Did it bother you? No, I think that, you know, what what is, how, how does this work? You learn from your mistakes. The mistakes in the past where they didn't do that and the track got almost unrideable. Um, this season has been plagued with the most rain and weather affecting moments that I've ever seen. Um, so they're trying to learn and adapt. And then, of course, because it's Mother Nature and there's no uh, 
predicting it fully. Mm-hmm. It kind of backfired, but I think that they had the right intentions. I think the best way to look at it was maybe Birmingham didn't get a chance, the opportunity to reach its full potential. I like red clay. I don't think we have enough on that. I love watching it at Arlington. I feel like that's really the one race that has that kind of red clay. I think it makes for good racing. So I think I think to say to judge it off of that is not fair because I don't think it was able to utilize its full potential. Uh, TJ, I kind of f- wish I- I'm the opposite of s- some of the other people in the media that have talked about this for a long time. Is that just leave the track as is, and if it does become flooded then you you'd make a few minor adjustments and then you just got to re- deal with it because the racing there were some exciting moments there was some what? drama but no whoops and just not the best track it wasn't that exciting to watch do you was, really think the outcome changed though you think it changed the outcome i mean it's yeah, kind of yeah i mean there's no way to say probably not much had there been bigger whoops, like we, you know, we don't know where Vial is going to be. Would would, a v, would Vial have won if we had massive whoops? I don't know. Maybe he he might be a little bit worse. Maybe somebody be a little bit better. Uh, you know, maybe maybe there's more crashes because the obstacles are more difficult if the track's left alone. I, I mean, I, who knows? There's no way to answer that. I just it was a little too easy though. TJ, sorry. Um, I would Scotty say that interrupted you. He's hey, so rude. Yeah, he's Scotty. Yeah. Scotty. I'm the only person on this show that ever. And there he goes again. People. Once again, I mean, uh, we're just, <laughs> all right. Uh, Thirty second mute of. He, did you really just mute him? That's I like did. my favorite. Thirty second thing mute ever. of Scotty. So moving on, they um they had a they had a I think they had a really good track for I was watching on TV mm-hmm. like um so. As far as being on TV, it didn't look like it was really tamed down that much. And the rhythm section they put where the whoops supposed to be was a jump line section. The soft as the dirt looked, it would have been just one rut through the middle of the whoops. I have absolutely no problem with it. It was awesome. I don't think that you have to have giant whoops for a Supercross, and it turned out mm, fine. That's but I, I, that's an arguing point. Yeah. But we'll move past that. So in future situations where they're calling for 80% chance of rain on Saturday. It's going to be four inches of rain. It's going to be a monsoon. Would you guys vote to dummy down the track a couple days ahead of time in preparation? Yes or no? TJ. Can I give a little bit of... Sure. Okay. My answer is yes, and the reason why is is because the idea to to a lot of people who haven't built tracks before is, hey, just build a house going to be. If it rains, knock some stuff down. It's good to go. But it doesn't work that easy because when you build the track... The if the whoops get get rained on and get murdered, and then you try to rebuild them, you're just building slop, and it yep, won't hold yep, together. Yep. I think if it's going to be eighty percent chance of rain, at least put a rhythm section where the, like a like a rhythm section where the whoops are, and call it a you know what I mean. The jump faces and stuff, those guys like knock where they can knock the triple down landing afterwards. That's easier, but knock turn you know I don't know. Like I said, the the dirt's going to be soft, Scotty. What do you think? Um. The so the first question is is did they still have press day on Friday? No, they canceled no, it. They canceled uh, it. We so, oh, well, they canceled the riding. We did the, the, ha- yeah, right. So there's right, no right. riding. Yeah, they don't have to cancel press day. Just cancel right. the riding. Yeah, I think that you know, like so. When did they make the decision that the track was going to be dummy down? Can if you're not if you're gonna if there's rain in the Probably forecast Thursday. like I you said, th- I think Thursday. Thursday. If you're saying that there's eighty percent forecast, cancel the the uh, the practice on friday or the the press yeah. day on friday for the riding part and just kind of watch and like go ahead and make the track like you want to and if it starts looking like it's going to get crappy then you know change it you well, have all that, day once that dirt gets wet like that you can't yeah. build, you they can't build a jump. It, get it covered and basically leave it I, I think i think what they did with the whoop section was fine as far but i wasn't there so it may have been different in person on Dude, TV. It, it looks so sloppy the morning. I actually, I think I even tweeted, this is going to be a mutter. They're not going to be able to save it. And then they did. Yeah. And <laughs> Okay. So, so they did save it. Yeah, but I think so. For, had for they, the most part. Had it been a real Supercross track, the chances are maybe they wouldn't have been able to save it. Okay. All right. As far as the racing goes, Jet wins again, two in a row. Probably should have been three in a row if you, you know, his mistake in Arlington cost him. Man, it's. I said a couple of weeks ago, I was like, ah, Jet's not that good. And I think he even said this last week. It's, it's, dude, it's about to get ugly. I feel, I just, I have a feeling he might just go on a run, TJ, and just win, win, win. He's, he's going to be hard to beat. I, I've been saying that. Like, yeah, I since, don't like this. I've been saying that since A1. Just wait. As soon as the first he gets a couple wins, then it's over. Well, well that's my point about the track is like, 
Jet probably still would have won. Like, it didn't help. It didn't, like, it gave the race to Jet. If no, anything, I didn't say it did, but yeah. other, there might have been better racing or just, mm-hmm. who knows? If I anything, know. I mean, so one of the things sure. that I wanted to kind of, that I thought about was Cooper does kind of deserve some credit because he's kind of stood up, stepped up and been the guy that has been getting second behind Jet. Um, he's done it the last few rounds, you know, or, you know, Daytona, he was a little bit further back, but for the most part, he's been the guy that's really kept the gap to Jet in that inside of four seconds. So, if anything, the track helped him, probably would have helped Cooper stay closer to Jet. So, in that case, maybe it helped the racing in some way. See, I, I think it was too hard to make up time because it was not technical. So, like, but there were if less, it had a whoop section, it, there it, were less that doesn't mistakes. benefit Cooper. Well, I mean, we don't know that it wouldn't have. We don't know that it would have been – Jet would have made a little mistake in the woods because they are more technical and more easy to make a mistake. I mean, although Jet – I don't know if they showed it on TV, but Jet attempted a quad in the yeah. middle of the main event. they didn't show it. Okay, and he cased the – I just – I was sort of looking in front of him. I was actually looking in the lane before, hit, before that. Mm-hmm. But I just all of a sudden saw him really high in the air, higher than normal, and I looked up and he was just like stretching it he, out. He and mentioned it, it yeah. on the podium. I actually I asked him – for some dumb reason, when I interviewed him, I forgot to ask, but I asked him on the on the press conference, like before yeah. the press conference, I said, did you pull a quad? And I just like, I just saw the tail end of it. He's like, yeah, I just felt like doing something different. It didn't go so well. I was like, holy crap. Like, he's just so comfortable. But had the had the track been a normal Supercross track, maybe there would have been more options like that where, oh, we're going to try this rhythm. But, we'll- but on normal Supercross tracks, very seldom – do you see guys pulling things out anymore? Yeah. And if you look at the older Supercross tracks, they weren't as technical. They weren't as hard. So guys were trying to step out. So I think it's the exact opposite. When you make the track easier, then these guys like Jet or any of the top guys, I'm just using Jet as an, as the example yeah. here, are willing to try new stuff. Before, I want to keep going with this a little bit, but I was thinking our top five tonight, our total train top five, I didn't, Pre think of a top five for next week. So Scotty, pay attention to the chat. If anybody has a re- anybody has a really good idea for a top five for next week, like write it yeah. down and let me know when we get to that. All right. Okay. Um. Anyway, continuing on though, does Eli turn this thing around, Scotty? Does he start? Does he get a win at this point? Like I'm starting to get a little concerned. Does he start battling consistently with Jet? Does Cooper step up? Like mainly Eli is who I'm thinking about right now because. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to get a little bit worried about Eli's, not the panic button, but I don't know that he's going to be a whole lot better the rest of the season. I'm, I'm kind of getting worried that he's not. Do I'm, you think he gets a win? I'm starting to lose faith, which is silly with him because yeah, don't do that. at any moment, he next weekend going into any, he so could win by three seconds and be like, oh, shit, he's back. Yeah. But right now... <laughs> 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 I don't know where okay, that came from. Fat Albert. Yeah, oh, <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. I, I am a little bit worried, though. I think the the bigger question is, is do we put... It, okay, ignore my question. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm just busting I, 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 I'll, roll, I'll, answer, roll. I'll answer your Let, question. That's got to roll. I'm just... Yeah, I'm, go ahead. I'm, the, it's ties, do, do we put, even if it's a little baby tiny one, is there an asterisk besides... If Jet does win the title, is because Chase changed bikes, was coming was uh, was coming off a new thing. Eli was coming off of a crazy injury. No, nope. there was some uh, misfortune for the other guys. You can keep talking; the answer's still going to be it's no. always okay. going to be no. There's always I, there's no asterisk because it was a shortened season for COVID. You you win championship, you win championship. I know every I, every year there's okay. things. This guy gets hurt. This happens. This happens. Doesn't matter. Well, okay, I, whether or not there's not an asterisk, do you, do you think that he has beat the best form of Chase and Eli Kenny and this year? Webb? Mm, the best they are this year, but like in the past, no. I think they. I I feel they were better, more consistent last year. But if I'm if I'm comparing the two, I, I'm not so sure that Jet still doesn't win last year. Yeah. He he doesn't make that many mistakes, and he just seems to be able to, like, I, I asked him, like, when you're out front, uh, you're riding like this, do you have more in the tank if you need it? And he really didn't answer. He just kind of He's grinned. not going to. But yeah. I, I believe he does. I don't even think he's trying that hard right now. So I just, I think he's, I do believe even though I, I don't want to believe that he's just something special and we're about to have another McGrath type era where it's just like, all right, this guy, good luck beating him unless something happens. Yeah. And, but, but Eli though, can Eli turn this around? 
Does, does think, uh, not yeah. can he? Yes, he can. Does he turn it around? I don't think that we've, I don't think that there's anything that's, it's, it's been kind of the, most of the same. The, the, some, when it's good, it's good. When it's, uh, when it's bad, it's bad, and it's and it's kind of been that way all season. He showed a right, little bit of speed. Question, though. That, so does can he get it back to like last year, where okay, he's one two every week, or he could be he should be winning, or he is winning. But he he did that last year. He would go one two and then six and then there three. One, I don't think it was as much. Maybe it was, but it, it feels it's, more. It's this It's been year. a little bit more. Well, there just hasn't been the ones. It's been yeah, that's two. It's been instead of being one six, it's been like two eight, and then so I mean, but that's just what's out there. I. I, I'm, I guess what I'm struggling with is what is he, he – you're saying he has to turn it around because Jet's running away with the championship, but does what is he – does he really have to turn something around? I guess or is, not turn – like be fighting for first and second instead of uh, – he's just back there. He's not catching up. He's getting a bad start or, or whatever, and he's just yeah. – behind he's off the pace of jet can he get on the pace of jet tj or does no. he no i i think i think you're, you're looking at a rider who is one of the best greatest of all times at the end of his career and just this is what you see we, we've seen it with everybody you yeah. saw it with chad you saw it with well not ricky because he left at the why he was at the top but had eli not got hurt last year and won and retired it'd have been like if we we would have been the whole time we'd have been like well if eli was still here we're just seeing the the transition i mean and there's no vet class for these guys there's no <laughs> you know what i mean they're yeah. just the young guys coming in are the guys they got to beat uh speaking of eli tomac yamaha yamaha motor usa has a reputation for dominance it doesn't happen overnight it's built over decades the YZ story is 50 years of iconic machines and groundbreaking innovations. Yamaha's new 50th anniversary edition YZs pay tribute to a half century of championship winning performance wrapped in stunning retro style. So check them out at yamahamotorsports.com. Uh, I've been on the Yamaha e-bike a little bit. I've got to take that thing out a few times, that YDX Moro 07 when my dad's not hogging it. I think it's a lot of fun, Scotty. I mean, it's not like TJ likes a, like a throttle e-bike. This is a pedal assist, but it really... It doesn't give me a lot of workout when I have it kind of on yeah. the middle, the middle uh, set levels and the boost level, full boost. But it's certainly fun to go kind of blitzing through the woods and pedal a little bit. And I, I really I've, like I've it. never rode one. Yeah, I've, they're cool. I would like to try. They're it. a lot of fun. If you're looking for an e-bike, I really would suggest this y, a YDX Moro Seven. It's tons of fun. It's, and if you're just looking for a new dirt bike, man, go check out your your local dealership and look at the, the Yamaha line, the YZ lines, or. You know, the off-road, the FX, or, yeah. or the, the F. They're, they're amazing bikes. A lot every, of fun. Every time that we're TJ right. and I have a conversation, uh, it turns into I should get an electric bike of some sort. Yeah. They're cool. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, I'm not really – I don't really care about the twist throttle, like full twist throttle like TJ does. I kind of – I want – for. I just like the pedal assist. I mean, I'd, I'd ride one, but I feel like it's not really what I'm into right now. Yeah. I think, well, mountain bikes are dumb anyways. You're dumb. Uh, Except for that Yamaha one, it's great. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> the the and sold. I've heard a lot of comments about like uh, they shouldn't go back to Alabama since we're still t on Alabama a little bit. To How was the turnout? I was going to ask. It was terrible in the stadium. Mm. Like the whole upper deck was empty. Do you think it was the weather, or do you uh, think it so, was the location? So people were telling me. I heard this from a number of different people, not necessarily the best sources, but that they actually sold all the tickets supposedly. But then maybe the weather kept them away from coming. And then somebody else told me they have a two-year deal there. Because I, I was hearing, like, Mathis talk about it. And he's like, oh, it's probably one and done. I, he thinks it should be one and done. It wasn't that good. I heard they have a two-year contract on that stadium. Could very well not be true. As a as somebody who's been there, obviously no one's ever been there for racing. Is it a good setup? Like, if the turnout was good, is it going to be, like, a Glendale or no. like a like a Nashville or anything no. like that. No, if, dude. If I if I put, I mean, I wonder what the were ticket, you there? No. Okay, hold on. Finish what you're saying. <laughs> do we need to do a thirty second <laughs> timeout? Yeah. What were you? No, so seriously. But, no, the stadium was a smaller. I don't know what full capacity is, but it's a smaller like college football stadium. Okay. Sort of like Salt Lake City, but I feel like it was even smaller than that. So it was Definitely, like Vegas, like like whenever we went to similar to UNLV, no. which oh. That's Vegas. Sam Boyd is. Sam Boyd. That's Sam where Boyd. UNLV play. Sorry. Sam Boyd, yeah. Um, just a smaller stadium, and it was all bleachers. With They so, had backs. They did have backs on the bleachers, but it's bleacher seating. I think the 50-yard the line seating was seats. Yeah. That's about it. It, it was just a like a lower, I'm going to say lower budget stadium. Mm. Gotcha. The area around it. Like the pits were closed. I mean, like, the pits were enclosed, and they were pretty cool. Yeah. I thought they were cooler than Salt Lake City. Uh, not Salt Lake, St. Louis. 
I thought they were pretty cool. Like it was a, somebody said it was a far walk. It's literally, literally you walk out of the stadium, you cross the street, you go into a building and there they are. Yeah, I guess. It you. wasn't that bad. Well, those people haven't had to go industry No, side the people that said it were weeds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they walked a long way. It, but this was not bad. In, industry side has to walk all the way around the building to get in or something oh, yeah. stupid. You know, it, sometimes it was really. I thought that I liked the pits a lot. Yeah, uh, the stadium press box was okay. Well, actually, the press box had these huge pillars on each window. So if you were sitting in front of one, you were like leaning to the left, leaning. Gotcha. It's not good on mic. Leaning to the right. Yeah. Uh, or even if you were in between one in a window, but then something happened off to your right and you look, there's like a pillar in front of your, seemed really a strange setup, even for like football, you're, yeah. you're going to miss st- stuff. So, so it, it, it strange stadium. It's, it's, it's the bottom of the barrel of the super crosses you've been to. Now I'm not saying uh, it's not saying the worst. It's not Oakland. I haven't even been to Oakland. Uh, I, I would so say, bad. I would say it's, yeah, I would say it is. I, I not like it's just like, oh, I will never go back. But it's just it's but just not it's just not up there. It's, it doesn't meet the level of other stadiums and events supercross. The whole event. On. That's yeah. what I mean. Okay. Overall. Now, Scotty, what were you gonna say now? I was gonna say if I paid like seventy five bucks and I, I went and I was sitting sitting on a, a bleacher, I'd have been like, Are you are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. I mean I, I, I hear you. You I were you. you were gonna I, I actually was told there's their the prices for those tickets and I again don't this is Certain people that like some of this was fans. The tickets yeah. were way less than a normal one. Like oh, okay. they had twenty dollar tickets. Oh, so okay. maybe well, the maybe the, even the best pricing was lower. I, yeah. I I guess I it's it's hard because I always go to Arlington every year, and yeah. that's literally like like I know that sometimes the the area for the track isn't always like the biggest, so we don't quite always get the best track. But the facility and the turnout and everything for Arlington is like. I mean, it's got to be one of the biggest ones of the year. What was the reason for not going to Atlanta? Uh, uh, I think pricing is why they don't go to the stadium. Got you. Um, and it's just an inconvenience to go to the Speedway. I'm not sure that's why they didn't go this year. I don't know that I ever actually heard I, the reason. Yeah. But I know it's a pain in the butt. Yeah. I, I do feel like there is, with, without having an Atlanta I don't know. Dome, Lewis may be listening. If Lewis, he said he was going to be, if he knows the answer to that, he, he probably would. Yeah. He can text if he wants to, but uh, I'm not 100% why they didn't go to Atlanta this year. Not not having an Atlanta domed a uh, theme with Supercross every year is kind of missing out of the sport. I feel yeah, like. for some reason that's that area brings in a lot. Yeah, of I people. don't think we'll ever go back to Mercedes Benz Dome. It sucks. Oh, wow. that it, it was, was like three so, times as much as the Speedway. Yeah, as soon as they made it the Mercedes thing, it yeah mm. sucks. A um, couple more things before we get to Max Anstey. I don't have any Mercedes on my list. Oh, really? Yeah, but I mean, the SLR was... Uh, MotoXPodShow at gmail.com is our email. We love getting your guys' input on our segments, just on the show in general. Any thoughts you have, feedback, etc. So MotoXPodShow at gmail. I asked you guys to load up our email. Got a few more than normal, but not enough. I still would like to see I have a lot more input on everything. So please, hit us up. And then don't forget, Vital MX Fantasy. There is a Moto X Pod Show League. The winner this week was... Uh, f- Vital member JPT21101. Uh, don't know your name. Don't have all that information yet, but you're the winner this week. I'll send you an email. If, I don't even know if you listen, but if you do, congratulations. But get involved in that league. We're giving some cool prizes away every week. Uh, let's see here. All right, let's. We got a little bit of time, real quick, before we get Max. Hayden Deegan drama. That's what the chat's been wanting to hear. Okay. Well, here's what I'm going to say first of all. So Can we just skip it. What? Can we just skip it? Yeah, let's go move on. No, okay, move on. no, okay. let's talk about it. We'll talk about it in six minutes. we got six minutes. So, heat race with the ha- the Seth Hamaker incident. Main event goes off the track. Uh, lap one cuts the track through the through the mechanics area. Uh, some other riders have done that too. And then the Cody Shock incident. So, I feel like I owe it a bit of an apology because I was, I'm there live. We don't see any replays. So, all three of those incidences... I kind of caught at the corner of my eye as I watched something. Then I turned my head back, so I didn't get a full view of it. I did see the Hamaker replay, but I saw more of it today. Post race and the Cody Shock interview, I was like, "It's ninety percent Seth's or even with Seth." I said it's like ninety percent Hayden's fault. Uh, I was I said he absolutely destroyed Cody Shock, and I said he passed like seven guys. None of that was accurate. All yeah. my claims and all my viewpoints from seeing it live were inaccurate. So I, I need to apologize. I'm backing off how much I put fault I put on Hayden other than the 
the re- the reactions mm-hmm. to the stuff. I don't like any of that stuff. So go well, ahead. like in the chat, they were talking about it, and I even commented in there about, well, Deegan's the only one that was off the track that got a, that a, got docked, and we're like, yeah, but he was. You could noticeably see it on TV that there was huge roofs flying up from the back of his bike, where the other guys came on, exited and came on the same spot, but they're just coasting along. Yeah. And, and honestly, it was just because of the aggressive riding on the side of the track. Live, it looked like he was fully pinned. Yeah, he was. It, it didn't could, look see as bad on video. Okay, I watched it today, but I didn't. it didn't look as bad as it did live. Well, I guess because I'm, I watched it after knowing about the penalty. So yeah, me too. You could see Roos flying yeah, up and yeah. nobody else's. Um, the Cody Shock incident was just a racing incident. I don't. Yeah, it wasn't I, as bad as I thought it was. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't bad. necessary for seventh, but uh, you know, it's, he's right. Yeah, no, none of us are going to really back down. If I we're see, in a race, so I seem okay. to be like like standing up for Deegan a lot here lately, yeah. and I'm not even like a huge fan. So um, I think he is probably getting a little extra hate. Probably brought on himself. I think it's more the attitude going to Kawasaki and throwing yeah. a fit, and then you add that on to Detroit yeah. where he's flipping Tom Vial off, and it wasn't even Tom's fault. Like, yeah, dude. I have said oh, on this show, fan. I've said on the show earlier last year, like, I like the kid. I think he's a good kid. He's got to mature a little bit. Like, calm down, bro. He may wind up being the, like, the, a great ambassador for the sport. Yeah. And he may wind up being awesome. But where he's at now, it's just, I see, I guess, the, like, a, I don't, I don't know him. So this is just a, a for instance, but like a sport brat acting up that may grow up to be a great man but right now I, I that's what i see and, and hopefully like it yeah that doesn't get back to him because i don't want the, <laughs> i don't want the show to sound bad i don't i don't well, want to make it look the show bad. i i think what you the the politically correct way to say that what the what i was thinking of is you know firstly he was expected to be kind of the guy this year he had the most hype around him in the east coast it, he yes he has a win it came at the downfall of Fortner since then he hasn't really performed the way he's supposed to he's conditioned to receive attention if he's not getting the positive attention because of the race wins as he's young when you see like kids they they'd rather have negative attention than no attention at all so I feel as some of it has come down, if you're going to look at it as a, as a psychological anal- anal- analysis, I can't, I, I know. It's okay. I, I, uh, you're going to get through this. Yeah. yeah. It's, we're, we're, I think that that's what's going on. Yeah. That it's all about just the way. He, it's the, just natural for him to, and, yeah, if, if he can't get good attention, he's going to get bad attention. It's just, I doubt it's he not even that thinks he, about he, that. It's I, just, I, he's it's, not. Yeah. It's just the, it's a, it's a conditional formatting thing because of his upbringing. Yeah, I see a I'm lot not, of... I'm not digging on him. No, I'm just saying... I'm just, just what he, the way he grew up with yes. the spotlight on all the time. It's and, natural for him yeah, to we're, crave we're, attention. We're doing this YouTube thing where everything we do is watched and we, we yeah. do have to entertain a little bit. So, But the attitude stuff bums me out. I mean, yes, he's still young. We were all full of testosterone and all that stuff. But and it, again, I feel bad for Cody Shock, but it really wasn't as aggressive as I thought it was. He I went have, from the highs to the lows. He's the, he has I his he yeah. says whole I have no problem highs and lows. with him flipping VL off or going over to Cowie afterwards. But then he needs to come up and go, guys, I was wrong. Okay. I thought it was Tom that did that. It wasn't. Sorry, Tom. You know, I thought it was. Yeah, hammock. And he may be behind the scenes. He may tell Tom, "I'm sorry," but but everything he does is in the spotlight. So he needs to let the fans know. You know what I'm talking about? Sure. Like send him a an invite to be in his um like some free tickets for his bouquet of flowers or or edible arrangement. Like like Jet, (laughs) send him a a um like two free tickets to the Deegan experience or something. (laughs) That'd be so funny. (laughs) All right, let's get to our first guest of the night. He's going to be brought to you tonight by Guts Racing. Andy Gregg and the Guts Racing crew continue to provide the best seats and foam available. If you want the same seats but used by Rockstar Husqvarna, Hep Suzuki, and many more, then you need Guts Racing. They have numerous color possibilities, staple or Velcro installation options, winged seats, and the best foam in the business with the Phantom Ultralight Seat Foam. Don't forget, they have complete seats for the Talari and the Super 73 and covers for the Segway and Suron. They also try to st- strive to ship orders within 36 hours, so visit GutsRacing.com today and order. Tonight, Guts Racing brings us Firepower Honda's Max Ansi. What's up, Max? Hello, mate. How are you? I'm, I'm doing all right. Good to hear. Good to hear, man. It's been a, well, you know, we haven't, I haven't seen you in a few days. So Lewis said you're still doing good after the incident at uh, Alabama. Not the way you wanted your night to go, but 
Uh, yeah. How do you look at that back now a few days later? It's just, you know, it's part of racing sometimes. Yeah. Uh, you said it. I mean, it, it's a mechanical sport. And at the end of the day, that that kind of thing can happen. The, the thing that I take away from it, you know, looking at a positive mindset on it is, you know, it didn't happen on a jump five <laughs> seconds before or five seconds after. And I'm good to go. I had a good day riding today. The the guys have got a handle on everything. They 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 know what it was. I'm I like it's just a just a failure of, of a part that they said should be able to do like fifty hours and it had only had a few hours on it. So mm. um I was like, All right, well it's not it's not my place, you know, that's 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 their their call cool. and, and obviously um yeah, it, the, the way I look at it is it sucks, but that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes that's it, you know. It's like, you know, I could have a crash or, or, you know, be the same in the same situation. It, it, it's like, all right, you know, we're, we've got a DNF, but seven days time we get to go again and, and, and go racing. And now we're, you know, midweek and I, I feel pretty good. I'm ready to go, ready to go in Indy. All right, sounds good. So we, we, when you came on, I don't know if you heard us, we were talking about some of the young riders and how they overreact to stuff. And I think you may have a career after you're done racing, training some of the young riders how to handle a situation like that. It could not have been done better. Oh, well, I, I appreciate that. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I do work very hard on, on my mental, on the mental side of racing and, and the, yeah, the mental side, also the emotional control. I've been I've been around long enough, and I've been in situations. Um, I, I've seen pretty much every situation, but now, you know, it, it's your perspective of how you look at it. You know, it, it, when you're young, I feel like you look at things as if it's life or death, or the biggest deal in the whole world. But you know, having a little guy, I, I mean, I mean, yeah, you saw a dark side. I mean, it's it's like the the Sunday after. After the race in Alabama was my my little guy's second birthday, and you know that that's all that matters. The next day, it's like all right, you know, it, it didn't go it didn't go the way that we wanted it to on Saturday night, but it's perspective on uh, on things, and of course we we want to go and do the best job possible and, and win a championship. I mean that's the goal. Um, but yeah, I, I I think I really put a lot of effort into into the mental side of of racing and and. I think that yeah, maybe, maybe that is an area that that gets overlooked, especially in, in this sport, in motocross and supercross. You know, a lot of other sports they they really uh, you know put a lot of emphasis on it. Whereas motocross and supercross, I don't feel like unless you go out of your way to find someone, it's hard to uh, yeah, to, you, you don't really get pushed in that direction. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe until you get a little older and you kind of realize it's important. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. It, I think I've always kind of. I mean, my my dad was was one of those that was into it even when he raced. And then for me, I've just evolved and grown with it and tried to enhance the level. And obviously, going through different different stages in racing. And um, yeah, it's funny. I mean, like literally a couple of hours ago, I was on the phone to. To, to my guy, um, he's an American guy. I met him on a plane on uh, going back to one of the races a couple of years ago, and, and started working with him on on the mental side of things too. You know, I've, I'm always developing and, and trying to, to to grow. And and um, you know, yeah, he, his name's Kevin. Actually, he's uh, uh, from Motai Mindset. Uh, I, I'm literally sat next to him on a plane, was picking his brain for for a couple of hours, and I'm like, right, yeah, let let you know, see what I can learn. And, and that, that's what I'm all about. You know, I, I do, I do blood tests to see if there's, you know, any areas in my body that I can improve, my nutrition, the things like that, and work on my mental side of things. I think when it comes down to situations like that with, with the racing and things not going away, it can, it can certainly help, obviously, keep things even. And at the end of the day, yeah, we all want to win a championship, but there's good days and bad days with that. You've got to be able to ride it out and not get, you know, too far ahead of yourself. Um, so, yeah, it is what it is. We're, we're in this situation. We don't rest again a few days' time, so. It's a great attitude to have. Oh, cheers. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like we've already mentioned, you handled it well. It was cool to see you keep PG keep on the TV. You definitely uh, wanted to say some things, and it was obvious, and I, would, I probably would have. Kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was lost for words, actually. It was I, the only word that I could think of, I was like, I can't say. Yeah. I, I, I was sitting there going, going, ah. Like, it took me a minute to kind of process and then go, okay, right, I, this is how I'm going to uh, this is how I'm gonna navigate this because otherwise I could be getting a fine in a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for well, sure. Let me ask you this you know, if. 
if it had been obviously you know uh Jay, JT's a, a writer and he, he has a good relationship with you guys. You oh, think if it, Thomas, yeah, okay, you think if it had been somebody else that you would have been a little more reluctant to, to partake in the interview? Um, no, to be honest, it, it, I don't know, the way I look at it, it, it it's part of, the, part of the job as well. It's, it's, it's a whole package. It, it, you know, there's a lot more to racing than just winning and I think with knowing, I mean, JT is, is great. Obviously, knowing him and just knowing the face helps a lot. If it would have been a random person then, yeah, maybe, but again, at the end of the day, you look at it and you realise that in it, you kind of have to I know that it's the name of the game. It's, it's, it's on TV. You, you're going to get caught in these situations. They want to see the emotion, whether it's good or bad. I mean, you kind of know what you're doing when you're signing up to it. Of course, there are times when you absolutely don't want to do things like that. Like, I mean, I didn't really want to sit there and talk about it whilst the other guys are racing and my red weight is being transferred from my bike to, to, to someone else's. But I'm like, ah, it sucks. But at the end of the day, respect to the fans. And if I was in a situation where I was watching the race, you'd, you'd want to know and you'd want to hear and you want to see, you know, get all the information you can. And I don't know, I kind of put myself quickly in, in that position of like, all right, there's a, there's a load of people here that kind of watch and I've got the red flag. I kind of have a responsibility to at least yeah, do the interviews and, and say what I can say and do what I can, can do in, in that situation. Uh, yeah, with the, you know, obviously the, this was your first kind of real, you, you've, you've been the benefactor of being consistent and that's why you're in the points lead and it sucks that the, the first time that you were inconsistent wasn't really your fault. Um, ha, my question was, is has it been intriguing kind of being that guy that's consistent and watching the young guys maybe make some of the mistakes that you did younger in career and just how you thought about the overall inconsistency of the class this year? Yeah, it's been wild. I mean, I thought that the West Coast was, was pretty wild. And then when we got to the East Coast, now it's even, even more wild. And I'm like, man, I, I don't, you know, I went to 6A and had the red plate. And even I was thinking, man, like, I don't even, I feel like I've been riding well. I mean, my speed, even though I've like, I was fast in practice, which is not normal. I mean, I went to race today, kind of. But it, it's been, even on the inconsistent side for me, in, I just, my starts have been inconsistent, or mm-hmm. not, I mean, maybe not, not as good as where they need to be against factory bikes. So I'm not putting my 